you are watching Redicon. My name is Dr. Salman. I'm one of Moscow's great radiologists. We're going to do imaging evaluation of the shoulder joint, MRI imaging. So the outline for this talk is going to be a spectrum of the rotator cuff disease and terminology, pertinent positive and negative findings that we have to mention in our report, and imaging of the shoulder instability. So this is my regular checklist when I look to the MRI arthrogram. First, I start with the rotator cuff tendons, the four tendons and the four muscles. Then I look to the subacromial subdeltoid bursa. I look to the acromiohumeral interval and the acromioclavicular joint. Then I move to the joint, look first for the long head of biceps, glenohumeral joint and the synovium. Have a good look to the labrum in axial and coronal. And I look to the nerve and vessels around the shoulder and then look to the other muscles as well. Just a few uh, words about the protocol. Uh, I usually don't talk about the protocol, but because of I've seen some of the images done in a wrong way, that's why I bring it. When we do a sagittal and coronal for the shoulder, we usually do it as an oblique sagittal and oblique coronal. If we do it straight, this is what we are going to end up with. Not completely coronal, not completely sagittal. So this is completely wrong when you do a straight coronal. Same thing when you do a straight sagittal is going to be uh, wrong as well. So what's the proper way? When you get there, your axial, you should take, take the plane from your axial. And for the coronal, you go perpendicular to the scapular spine. And then you end up proper coronal of the shoulder. Same thing with the sagittal. You go perpendicular, parallel to the glenoid articular surface. And then you get a proper sagittal for the glenohumeral joint. Let's move to the some of the anatomy of the rotator cuff tendons, important anatomical points. So we have four tendons. Anteriorly, we get the subscapularis tendon, and then supraspinatus posteriorly, infraspinatus, and then teres minor. As you see here, there are three tendons posteriorly, one tendon anteriorly, and there is a little interval or a gap between subscapularis and supraspinatus, and this is what we call the rotator cuff interval. This is where the long head of biceps is passing. If we get diagrammatic representation of the tendons and the muscles, anteriorly you could see the subscapularis muscles coming from the anterior surface of the scapula and inserting at the lesser tuberosity and it is partially covering the long head of biceps at the bicipital groove. You can see a bit of the supraspinatus. We get from the posterior, you get the scapular spine and then continuous with the acromion. Above it is the supraspinatus, below it is the infraspinatus and the teres minor. If we get some of the MRI images, this is more anterior as you see here in the uh, cross-reference image. So this is there's going to be the subscapularis muscle. As we are moving more posteriorly, you can see here uh, the acromion. This is the supraspinatus muscle, supraspinatus tendon. This is the lateral head of the deltoid. This is very important, particularly when we look to the post-operative patient. We have to make sure this is actually intact and insert or originating from the lateral surface of the acromion, because this is at risk of dehiscence in post-operative patient. Trabezius, as we are moving more posteriorly, you get the infraspinatus muscle, and then you get the teres minor. If we take it from the sagittal, so always make your landmark acromion articulating with the clavicle. So acromion is a posterior structure. Here is the crocoid, which is an anterior structure. Now we know this is going to be the subscapularis muscle, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. Acromion, crocoid. This is going to be the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, the three posteriors, and anteriorly is going to be the subscapularis muscle.
As we are moving more laterally, we start to see the myotendinous junction and the tendon. So this is going to be the supraspinatus myotendinous junction. This is infraspinatus, and this is the teres minor. And more anteriorly, you get the subscapularis. It's already formed in the tendon. And then we get the long head divisives at the interval. As we are moving more laterally, this is where the tendons start to form the cuff. That's why we call the rotator cuff, because they make a cuff around the humeral head. And now it's very hard to see which one is which at this image. All these tendon basically now inserting around the humeral head. And we know in the shoulder, the main stabilizer are actually the tendon rather than the ligaments. Generally, when we speak about the tendons, we can divide them generally in two types of tendon. Some of the tendons are cord-like or robe-like, such as the long head of biceps, perennial tendon, and some have more width. They are thread-like, such as the rotator cuff tendons, all of them, and Achilles tendon, for instance, quadriceps tendon. It has more of a width. And this is very important when we talk about the concept of the complete versus incomplete, full thickness versus uh, partial thickness. And I'll come back to this. So if we look here to the uh, sagittal image, we can see the supraspinatus actually it has more of anterior posterior width. So it's not a robe-like, it has more of a width that does extend. And that's very important when we come for description of the tear because the whole thing could be torn or part of it could be torn and we'll come back to this. Same thing with infraspinatus, it has more of a width and teres minor. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for new courses. For more modules and radiology CMEs, please visit www.radicon.org.